Okay. All right, perfect. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome um, to this month's um, Brisbane Infrastructure and DevOps Meetup. Um, um, special hello to our, all the new people. Um, g'day. Hope you guys uh, stick around. Um, there's always lots of interesting new stuff happening. Um, this month, obviously, uh, we're going to be talking about Team City, but um, yeah, I'll just quickly. Oh, we're having some technical difficulties. Sorry, I think PowerPoint just crashed on me. Let me just. Yeah, we tried right. to we tried to use something Microsoft. Just bear with us. Okay, alrighty. I'm pretty sure it was working fine a while ago. It was. <coughs> Yeah. It has to. It has to break when it's um it's important. <laughs> That's all right. What we can do is I'll just quickly um. Oh no. Oh, I'll try. I'll see what if it works. Um, I might try and share my screen and see if that works. Um, and hopefully I can capture it in the recording because I'm just capturing the video. Oh, it shows you're in there. Cool. Let's see if this works. Um. Uh, see if this works okay no oh, where's my having technical difficulties ah stuff i'm just going to have it open that's easier all right um give me a second i'm just going to share my screen um worst comes to worst wayne i might just ask you to share um just if yeah, i can't that's get be the recording because i got it like a mac and i don't even know what i'm doing okay <laughs> Uh, we we do have a lot of technical support here, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I'll be I'll be able to do it if I need to. Just let me know. Okay, cool. No worries. Let's see if Rain I can. Wayne's setup looks pretty professional, Wayne. With oh yeah, it's everything. had a little upgrade. Yeah. Okay. Um, nice. can you guys see that? Okay, my yep Teams is broken, so I don't think I can share. Um. Yeah, I can't share unfortunately. Okay. Um. Are you good, Jimmy, or do you want me to? Um, I'm trying to launch the PowerPoint using Edge, and yes, it seems like it's working. So. Okay, cool. I was, I was going to say that this is typical, isn't it? Typical. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, I might as well crack on anyway. Um, while we sort out yeah. the technical difficulties. Um, so. Share to go, Jimmy. By the way. Yeah, share whenever you're ready to go. Um, so. Yeah, ready to um, did the work. Yep. Cool. Um, so go to the next slide. Thanks. Yep. So we're. Base, uh, um, sponsored by um, InSync Technology. Um, InSync Technology is a rapid circle company. Uh, um, sorry, which was re um, recently purchased um, by Rapid Circle, um, and so they um, have been uh, they've been providing. Um, yeah, they've been sponsoring us for quite a bit of time um, since the inception. Obviously, Hudson as well. Um, they've been providing an awesome meetup space for us to be able to actually meet up when we have the opportunity and there's no pandemics happening. And then finally, we have um, Script Runner. So um, Script Runner are a, a, um, a, a PowerShell platform solution that basically allows you to um, essentially automate a lot of your services for people that don't actually know PowerShell. So a um, huge thank you to um, Script Runner for paying our meetup costs. Um, so we'll get to jumping on to the next slide. Actually, before we do that, I'll quickly introduce um, everybody here. So my name's Michael. Um, I'm a Microsoft MVP, um, Cloud and Data Center. Um, I work at InSync Technology as a senior consultant. Uh, we have Wayne as well. Um, Wayne, I should just give it a bit of a wave. Yep, perfect. Um, Wayne is now working at Cloud Guru as a Azure um, as an Azure trainer, um, and um, so he is one of the other. Um, uh, um, I wouldn't say leaders because we're all equals. Um, let's just get yeah, organizers, facilitators. Let's use facilitators. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have. Um, 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 Alex um, as well. well. Alex is not with us tonight. And finally, we also have Mitch. So they're our um, facilitators. So if you do need to get in touch with us, um, just hit us up and um, we can go from there. So I'm just going to, um, let's go and do the news. So um, over to you, Wayne. Cool. Thank you for that. Um, yeah. So just onto the Azure news, we'll do some AWS news. And I think the Azure news has got a bit of PowerShell in there as well. So <clears throat> I'll jump through these. And if anyone has any other news they want to add at the end, then let me know because uh, you can't always cover everything. Um, but um, 
So one of the things that Microsoft has added recently is they've added this maintenance con control for virtual machine scale sets. So that allows you to sort of have better control over when your scale sets in Azure, uh, automatic maintenance occurs and when you want to replace the image on those, how and when that occurs with maintenance windows. So that's kind of cool. Uh, there's five more um, free services for um, Azure have been made available. One of those is Key Vault, which is awesome. Um, and there's four others. I actually forget which ones they are off the top of my head, but there's there's a few more there. Um, more free stuff is always better. Um, <clears throat> they've added uh, in preview identity-based connections in Azure Functions. So you can use uh, managed identities with your Azure Functions to access Azure resources, which is kind of nice, just less keys to manage and all that sort of stuff. I'm very much looking forward to that one. Um, I might give the next one to you, um, Michael, because I believe you might have done some durable function stuff if you want to announce that one. Yeah, so PowerShell um, durable functions has finally gone into um, GA now. So um, I think it went late last month, if I recall um, from reading the article, but essentially um, a lot of the issues have been resolved, um, but essentially it's um, from a logic perspective, it's pretty much the same as what has been previously written in the alpha. Um, and then with regards to PowerShell 7, that's now going to be shipped via Windows Update. Um, the reasoning for this is because um, initially it was being shipped via the store. A lot of you guys probably would have known that PowerShell was being shipped by the store. Um, it's being added by update just because of the fact that Windows Server operating systems don't have st the, um, the Windows Store. So there needed to be a method um, to be able to actually deploy that. Um, and I think that was you. Oh yeah, AVs. A -V, um, AVs, AVs. Yeah. yeah. So um, this is something actually just stumbled across. There's a bit of a kind of a um, something that was interesting was um, there's a module called AVVIS. Uh, oh sorry, AZVIS, which essentially allows you to build um, Visio diagrams or, or maps of your Azure environments. So it's from what I've just had a quick flick of and read. Um, it's essentially able to read ARM templates. It's able to read different types of um, um, different types of Azure resources. So you can actually connect it to a production environment, and it's able to actually generate maps um, of your resources. And they seem to be actually quite um, quite good. So definitely check that out. It's um, yeah, I just saw that today, and I thought that was actually pretty cool. And I know obviously um, it's always nice to be able to see that kind of stuff. So um, that's it for me actually no sorry there's one more quick actually no i'll, I'll, I'll add it at the end now okay and yeah and just on the az viz i think that's still in preview or development or yep. something it's just it's a, still in a community powered thing so mm. i think it's mostly one guy that's doing all the work yep. but um, it's coming along when mm. i first looked at it i was like nah this is not this is not ready but it's getting better every day yeah um uh, yeah his name is uh, pratik saying i've been using this module since quite a long time now and do, and do you write it Ronald? Oh, absolutely. It is. It it uh, gives some really amazing um, information. I'll share. Uh, I'll share a screenshot in the chat. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, now for some AWS news. Uh, so uh, key management service has gone multi-region, so you can now set up replication for your key management service in AWS. So you can actually have your keys available when you fail over to a different region in AWS. Yay! Applications can still work. Um, Workflow Studio has been um, made available. I'm not sure. I think that's in preview. Um, but um, so if anyone's done any step functions in AWS and they've had to write the JSON for that sort of stuff, uh, they've now got Workflow Studio, which makes it much nicer. It's all user interface driven. Uh, people who don't even know code can do some step functions in AWS now. Uh, finally, crash consistent backups for um, AWS and AMI images are now crash consistent as well. So you don't need to shut down your EC2 instances to um, create crash consistent backups and images, which is kind of nice. Um, I don't know how it got this far without without that being a thing, but it, it's now 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 supported. Um, and um, per second uh, per se second billing has been added for Windows and SQL Server on AWS, which is awesome. So just allows you to um, save more money. That's it for AWS. Yep. Um, I'll just quickly um, add there. Um, Ashley and Rana, I will be sending your books this week. So sorry about the delay. Um, I've been, obviously, I've been dealing with a few issues, um, but I will be sending your books this week. Sure. Thank you. Uh, cool. Yeah, call for speakers. Did you want to do that, Michael? Yeah, right. Um, so, guys, we need speakers. Um, 
So if you're interested in actually giving a talk, um, hit hit us up. Um, you can do it via, um, if you're not on Slack, um, we can, um, one of us can probably paste that link below. Obviously there's, um, I know that we have a link um, that is sent to you when you join Meetup. Um, but essentially, if you're interested, just hit us up, up on Slack, um, provide a topic, and um, we will slot you in. Um, so just on the speaker thing, just quickly, Michael, um, one of the some talks that we're interested in doing is sort of, um, and we are looking for people to do these talks, is um, talks like introductory talks to DevOps, like uh, basics of CICD, which is Jimmy, Jimmy is doing tonight, and um, basics of infrastructure as code and configuration as code and those sorts of things. Um, so if anyone's interested in doing like an entry level talk in those areas or any other DevOps technology, could be Terraform, could be, we've already had Ansible, but we could do Ansible again, um, Chef or Puppet, any of those things, if you're interested in doing talks on any of those things, um, and um, yeah, you wanna um, sort of help make a name for yourself as well, um, sign up, let us know. And I think as well as that, if you're not comfortable with um, presenting, um, that's something that myself and Wayne can definitely help with. Yeah. yeah, it's really, it's really not that like it's much. It feels much more daunting than what it really is, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> You're in a group of people who like, and they're not, we're not here to attack each other. Um, so even if people like everyone makes mistakes, so um, uh, I wouldn't be concerned about presenting and uh, making mistakes or anything like that. Alrighty. Um, so let's just jump onto the next slide, please. Um, okay, um, so I'm just going to hand this over to Jimmy. Um, Jimmy, the floor is yours. Hey, hey, um, I'm Jimmy. Um, I'm, I, I think my video is not working when I'm sharing my screen, but yeah. <laughs> right, so today I'm going to be talking about um, what CICD and um, what, C, what is CICD and how to achieve that using Team City. Um, so the first thing is, what is CICD? Um, CICD is the process of taking out um, human out of processes um, in a lot of IT processes right now. Um, stuff like uh, regression testing, um, your performance testing, your build, your deployments, they all can be done by humans, but it is more efficient and um, how do you say, more efficient um, and so faster if it's done through a pipeline that can be uh, defined through code. Um, I'll share a bit of a story on um, how my previous environment um, is before CI/CD and how it um, changed after CI/CD. And um, yeah, um, previously before CI/CD was um, introduced into uh, my previous company, which I was working for in test group, um, I was in this team called the release team. Um, so what the release team was responsible for was pretty much the merging of codes using something called um, Perforce. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of it, heard it before. Um, it's pretty much it's just like Git, but not as good as Git. And um, yeah, it was a handful to use. <laughs> so the release team will um, uh, merge codes based on um, requests from the developers, um, and then the release team will also be responsible for um, compiling the codes. Um, normally, we will log into a dedicated server. Uh, with all the prerequisite for compiling a certain binaries installed, we go in there, we download the um, source code, and then we build it. Um, that building process will probably take a while, and um, most of the time we'll be just sitting there looking for errors and stuff like that. <laughs> Very tedious process. Um, once we build that, um, we actually have to deploy it to test environments, and that's done manually as well. And because the environments is pretty huge, um, the um, uh, system comprises a lot of tiny systems. We actually have like, I think from memory is like 20 environments or so like that. So, and each environment has very unique combination of um, subsystems, versions. Um, so in order to um, uh, upgrade a certain environment to the latest system, we actually have to install certain binaries with certain versions and stuff like that. And all those are all documented through a um, developer's um, release notes and stuff like that. So the developers will tell us environment, let's say environment 19 has to have so-and-so so versions of um, binaries and we have to compile them 
um, shuts this, shut the system down um, manually, ensure everything is shut down properly, install the updates, bring it back up, validate in the environment, and then head it off to the testers where the testers will start doing their uh, uh, testings. Um, and then came along Team City and Octopus and GitHub. <laughs> um, and then it changed. Um, we have Team City build the um, uh, build the binaries um, upon developers' commits to GitHub. And then once Team City has produced an artifact, it gets pushed to Octopus Deploy. And Octopus Deploy will deploy a set, um, uh, set combination of versions to selected environments, which means when developers commit codes, makes pull requests, and merge their branches and stuff like that, it all gets done automatically. Uh, it does not have, it does not require human interaction where you actually go in and ask developers, hey, do you need this version, this environment, and why is this not working? And uh, is there any special steps we have to do for so and so binaries before it actually starts working? Um, everything gets streamlined, um, which is a great thing for CI CD. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, before CI CD, the team is always um, swamped with requests for upgrading environments, building. Um, binaries, compiling binaries, uh, merging codes and stuff like that. Uh, but once we have implemented CI/CD, everything goes pretty much one click and it'll deploy itself. Um, oops, wasn't meant to click that. Right, why CI/CD? Um, reliability. Um, so what I mean by reliability is the process will always remain um, consistent. Um, there's no human errors. Um, like I said, if um, you have a massive environment where you have test environments um, consisting of different versions and binaries and custom steps and stuff like that, everything can be documented through, well, everything can be coded through CI CD pipelines so that, um, you know, once you deploy a certain binary or a certain, uh, to a certain environment, it will always follow the same step. Um, reusability, as in, well, let's say if you deploy to a test environment, you can reuse the same step to deploy to the prod environment as well, um, so that you can validate your steps that um, for deployment steps, if you deploy to test, it works. If you then you deploy to prod, it should work with the same step as well. Um, speed, um, humans definitely can't do enough clicks to go faster than uh, <laughs> what code could do. Um, control, um, what I mean by control is when pull request comes in um, to merge from a certain feature branch to your main deployment branch, um, you can get peer reviews, you can put in approval, you can put gates in so that what goes in production will always um, require approval so you don't get accidental deployments and stuff like that. Um, accountability, um, most CIDC pipeline has very detailed audit on what happens when a log of, uh, log of what happens and who actually performed those steps. Um, so that you know if um, something does go wrong in production environment, um, you can actually check what actually happens and um, why it happens. Um, so yeah, that's that's all I have for um, that. And now I'm going to do a quick demo on how we could spin up a quick Team City through container. Um, let me just go share a different screen. Uh, do that. Stop sharing my screen. Let me share my other browser. That's good. Why does Firefox not come out under my sharing screen? Oh, there is share. All right, right. I have a empty um, uh, resource group here. So let me go create. Uh, let's see. This should work. So I'm going to spin up um, a quick Team City um, instance from containers. Um, 
I would first need a source account. Sorry, yep. Jim. Is, 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 is that um, uh, cropped just for me, or is everyone else browse the browser cropped for everyone else, or is that just me? Sorry. All right. Did it cropped? Um, let's resize it. Oh, that Does looks look? good to me now. Yep. Right. Yeah, on, on, oh, now on Drive White. So. <laughs> I don't know if that's just me, though. Yeah, that could be I'm just, just a me thing. thing. It's yep. like a four by three that window. Yep. Is it better now? You wanted to keep it fairly small, Jimmy. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. I'm doing this on my um, ultra wide screen, so the resolution might be a bit weird. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you might have to um, shrink it even smaller than what you've got now. For me, I don't know if everyone else has the same problem though. I, yeah, don't, I, I can't speak for everyone else. On the left, it starts with the E. From oh, there, you go. Um, yeah, you can see the whole thing now. No, it's oh, good. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Sorry about that, Jimmy. Oh well, this Hello, is quite you. small. <laughs> right. No worries. Um, so here you go. Let me just create a storage account. Uh, the reason I'm creating a storage account is because um, I want to mount um, mount a file share to the container so that Team City could keep um, its configuration um, uh, between um, between sessions. Um, so let's create that. Is this running? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Let me. Well, this is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, come on, start calm. Well, on, wait for that. Um, it's, not like it's a VPN gateway or something. Come on. Well, that waits. Uh, oops. Oh, I can't see this thing. Oh, there it is. Right. Let me go start up the other server that I prepared as um, a demo for CI/CD. I'm just demoing um, right now on how easy it is to actually spin up um, uh, Team City. <laughs> let me just start those two. And let's go back to. This one here. All right. So storage account done. Um, let's create um, two file shares in that. Um, one for Team City, oops, and the other for a agent. So that's that. So let's double check to see if the file share has been created. Uh, da, 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 file share. Yep, two file shares. And let's create the team city server. Oh, right, account key. That's what it. Uh, where is that thing? No, oh, you guys can see this. I'm just going to delete everything later. So. I think it actually stays. There you go. First container. Um, all right. Oops. That's the container for the server, and this is the container for the agent. Let's create that. All right, demo servers um, should be creating right now. Yep, pending. Let me just make sure the one that's actually set up and supposed to be running is actually running. This is where the test is. Let me just see if that's in there as well. Uh, that. Oh, it's actually still creating. Everything's slow for some reason. Um, As we went to sleep. <laughs> sometimes it starts up really fast and sometimes just um, slow. Um, right. The demo server should be 
it's still creating. Oh, let's see how long it takes waiting. On hindsight, I probably should start started off with this and um, and then explain what CI/CD and why CI/CD <laughs> all this thing creates. Um, uh, come on, Azure, do your thing. Um, is this thing at least ready yet? Probably not. Still creating. So, um, Jimmy, just while you're waiting for that container to spin up, um, yep. do you want to just explain to us um, uh, the two file shares? Unless you, um, you might, I might be jumping the gun here, but you've got two file shares. Why you created yes. of those? Yep. Um, well, pretty much the file shares to um, store the configuration for the containers. Um, because if you do not have a file share, um, Team City has no place to put its configuration, so the configuration does not persist. Um, so things like your build configuration, like uh, um, build configuration, your projects, nothing will stay between um, containers, restarts and stops. Um, so yeah, that pretty much does to so that your configuration could persist within container crates. Does, does that make sense? So, yeah, and so do you have one that's shared between all agents and another one that's for individual agents or something? What, what um, else two? One is for the server itself. Uh, that's where all the um, configuration of your projects live. And the other one is so that your agent could store its configuration. Um, each agent will have its own unique authorization key. Um, if you do not have a persistent storage, um, you have to authorize your agent every time um, it comes online. Um, it really depends on what you what you choose. Um, you can either have it as um, uh, without a file share. So when, whenever you spin up the, sorry, you restart the agent, you just have to go into Team City and authorize it. Um, I'll show you what, um, what I mean later once this thing starts. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, agent wise, it really depends on. Um, on your decision if you want want it to have a file share or not. But it's important for the server to actually have a file share so it can store the configuration and stuff like that. If you do not, like I said, you'll not have uh, your projects when you stop and start your agent again, uh, sorry, your server again. Um, <clears throat> so let's just try that. I'm pretty sure this will be up soon. Yep. Is this the server? Is this the demo? All right, this is the actual server. Let's go back to demo. Team City demo. Is this one up and running yet? All right, it's running. Copy, paste. Too many ones. All right, that's Team, team City running. So you just have to go proceed. Um, It'll do its um, thing and stuff. Um, you can actually configure it for um, Microsoft hosted SQL Server, but it'll do just fine for this test. All right, Team City can actually log in now. Um, hopefully, you guys can't see me typing into um, my one pass. No, we couldn't see it. It just gave us the passwords. Yeah. Ah, oh, right. Well, it will be on the internet forever then. <laughs> Hold on. I'm pretty sure I unlocked this thing. Oh, well. Looks like the extension does not like it when I'm sharing for some reason. Um, <clears throat> let me copy that. Paste. Is this one still starting? Yep, still starting up. Um, but yeah, um, 
to start up Team City is pretty much it's pretty easy. You create a um, file share for the server and then attach it to the container, and yeah, you have your Team City like that. <laughs> um, and so, Jimmy, just quick question. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. But, um, so you you've got two container instances, do you? Have you got one that's a server and one that's an agent or something? Am yes. I understanding that correctly? Yep. So the um, container. Uh, so the agent container actually is the agent that does all the work. Um, the server is the one that contains all the configuration. So how it works is the agent will contact the server to pull jobs and the agent will start running jobs and send the result back to the server. Um, the server actually is the one that stores everything. Um, so if you lose the server, yeah, you lose everything, which is why the file share is important for the server, but it's not important for the agent. Um, generally, it's good that the agent does not um, retain um, artifacts that it builds or configuration that it builds um, so that every agent could be fresh when it um, receives job. Um, previously in test group, um, we do have configuration. When we first started using Team City, um, we had Team City running the agents as um, long leaf agents. Um, so we would build uh, VMs put the Team City agents in and all jobs in Team City will be run by um, those um, agents. Um, problem with that is certain team, certain developers, um, certain developers teams, they require certain um, uh, built prerequisites or built binaries or DLLs and um, all sorts of dependencies. Um, the issue arises when two different teams um, use the same uh, agent, they'll start installing their own prerequisites and stuff like that. And when one team, another team builds on that team city agent, um, sometimes they get inconsistent result. Um, and after um, after a lot of investigation and stuff like that, we realized that um, yeah, some build pipelines are installing stuff that um, is tainting the builds from other um, developer groups. Uh, so then we migrated to um, Team City has this thing called um, Cloud Profiles, where they actually be able to spin up agents um, on demand. Um, you just have to give it a EC2 image or a VM image, and you'll be able to spin up the um, VM uh, and use it as a um, agent. So that whenever a builds runs, you always know that the build it will be built on an agent that has a very um, consistent amount of application installed in it. Um, so let me accept that. This is the new one. So let's go accept, continue. And you can put in your username. So let's do demo, demo admin password. Uh, let's go with uh, password 1234 password. One, two, three, four. And so, Jimmy, just another question. Um, yep. Do you know if it has that same sort of integration with Azure? So you can have the container instances start dynamically as well? or? Um, yes, they do have a plugin that, act that actually um, does that um, with Azure. Uh, it's a separate install, unfortunately, um, but it's a um, official um, uh, Team City plugin created by JetBrains. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, this is the um, this is a way. <laughs> um, so you'll be able to do all your stuff here. Uh, unsuppressed the agent is not. Oh, there is the agent connected. Unauthorized. You just have to press this, authorize it, and you'll be able to um, send jobs to this agent. Well, not technically send the agents. We're able to. Um, pull jobs from Team City. Uh, yeah, if you do not have the file share on every restart of this agent, you have to go here and authorize it to actually um, um, pull jobs. Um, but there you go. Um, with a couple of lines, container interest, two container instances and a storage account, you get your Team City up and running. Um, so let's go to uh, GitHub where I have my 
sign in. It's almost too easy these days to get these things up and running, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it, it is great. Um, well, then again, um, stuff like GitHub Manager DevOps, where they have uh, vision control history, uh, vision, vision control and stuff like that, they do have their own pipelines. I guess that's why Team City actually have to uh, have to uh, simplify their process so that people will be more attracted to um, start up with Team City rather than use the um, um, default um, pipelines like um, GitHub Actions. Um, GitHub Actions is, I think, I heard it's pretty good, but it's definitely not as complete as a Team City um, setup. Um, yeah, so. Let me demonstrate a um, uh, a pipeline from the start to the end. Right. Let's say what's that thing? Let's say I'm a developer. Um, let me just go destroy this pull request here because we do not want this. Uh, how do I? What's that abandon button? Yeah, close pull request. Can I actually close this? So different from Azure DevOps, but <laughs> um, yeah. So let's say I'm a developer um, and I'm developing um, this website here. Um, let me go deploy to prod first because um, I destroyed the container. Um, there should be a website container in here, but I've destroyed it prior to this test, but yep. Let me just go build it again. Right, so what this pipeline actually does, it actually creates, um, it creates a container from an image that's been built by this, um, other pipeline here. Um, it should come out fairly quick, I'm pretty sure. There you go, web prod. Let's see. I'm pretty sure it's running on, oops, about 3000. Six seconds left, this should be done fairly soon. Containers running, logs, yep, for 3,000. Um, those that has done have done the Docker thing, I'm sure you'll recognize this web page. This is the um, starter um, uh, tutorial um, container image. Um, so when you here's test. And can add items and stuff like that and delete. Um, that's the starter web page. So let's say I'm developing this web page. Let's say I want to um, change this one here. Let's say I want to change this text instead of it being no items yet. I can change that to static. Um, appreciate that. Uh, oops. No. Let's say I want to edit this. Yeah. Oops, am I not in the right file? Um, oops. You can actually search in the search bar, Jimmy, um, and then basically it'll be able to search the repo. Yep, that's a good idea. Oh, I'm pretty sure I searched in this file and couldn't find it. I wonder why is that? Oh, oh well. <laughs> uh, right. Am I not? Oh.
There we go. Let's say I want to make this to this is a this is a bit. Um, let's create a new branch. Jimmy patch two same step. And Jimmy, why are you yep. uh, choosing to create a new branch? Um, it's not a trick question, just for those yeah. people. <laughs> um, it's it's good. Well, it depends on your team's um, uh, um, branching strategy. Um, my branching strategy is we always have a feature branch that we um, use to uh, make changes to your um, code before it's actually merged into the main or master branch. Um, yeah, so it really depends on your team's um, branching strategy. If your team's branching strategy is to always commit to master, which I highly um, uh, not recommend. <laughs> um, yeah, it's always good to do a pull request from a feature branch to a master branch, um, just so that you have controls on um, on your just um, have a talk, just basically discussing different uh, Git workflow um, strategies, because there's quite a few out there, and it's qu quite a uh, um, passionate topic among some devs, I've noticed. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, so like this, like let's say I create a feature branch to actually um, uh, to change that one message. Um, uh, so I will create my pull request. Um, for my feature branch, and let's wait for Team City to pick that up. Come on, Team City. Did I not make the right request? Yep. And so, Jimmy, what do you expect Team City to do now that you've created this feature branch and committed uh, to it? Right, Docker build should build a uh, should trigger build based on that. Um, on that. Um, request. Um, oh, there is. Was it not running yet? Oh, it's actually cute. Um, what? No agents. Oh, might just disconnected. Um, let's see if the agents actually running. It is running. Did I get this uh, right? Oh no, it is actually here. Oh, that's weird. Uh, my just are not such. Oh, right. Let me put it into the right pool. Um, Jimmy, did you want to just explain that to us? What the, what you think the problem is? Oh, right. These are all um, really good learning experiences. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> um, it's just that. Um, oh, right. Now I see. Now I see my mistake. Um, when I was doing this, um, this whole compiling thing, um, I was quite new to Docker. Um, I wanted to have Docker be able to build Docker images within Docker itself. Um, that's something that's possible from what I read. Um, that's something called Docker and Docker, and that's actually an image provided by um, um, Docker as well. So we go to um, Docker Hub. Um, I tried to build um, the Docker container from Docker itself. Um, which is supposed to be um, supported, but I got trouble um, trying to run it in um, ACI. Because um, I think it does require certain configuration on the host that's running the um, Docker containers, um, which we do not have control on if we, were to, if we are using ACI. <clears throat> so what I did was I create a, um, a um, Linux VM and put the um, and put the Team City agent in it, and then I install Docker in the Team City um, agent. 
um, so that I could use it to run all my um, projects that requires Docker in this agent. So I have two different pools here. Um, I got the default pool, which contains the um, Team City agent that's created in um, in Linux, and then I got the Azure container, which contains um, agents that spun up through um, um, ACI um, Azure Container Instances. Um, so let's wait for that to start up. That should be fairly soon. Nope, actually it's up. It's running, running um, this. So what it does is creates my image from the pull request. And we can deploy this to our oh, I don't like the rate. Why rate has to happen? Um, oh right, I have too many calls. Um, <laughs> um, So let me delete these two containers because we are done with them. Um, let's just delete the entire resource group. Was it not deleting? <clears throat> How many times have you spun around on your chair, Jamaica? Uh, yeah, on, uh, yeah, on chair multiple times. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, let me go deploy that again. Deploy. And the great thing with Team City is um, you can actually link different builds like this. Um, why I'll explain what I mean. So let's go to edit set. Come on, was it not edit settings? Edit settings can create a dependency on Docker build. So you can actually use the parameters that are set in the Docker build um, pipeline like that. That's something that um, I don't think um, um, Azure DevOps can do very well, <laughs> uh, which is something that's uh, great about Team City. like that. You can actually specify its dependency and using the um, parameter of, of its dependency. Um, why this is great is because you can use the same um, uh, exact steps for both test and prod, let's say reusability, um, and just share the um, parameters that are defined through containers here. Um, so what this does is it actually uh, create container. Um, oh wait, sorry, no, that's the template. That's the project um, Docker. Yep. Like I have a step here to actually determine the um, tags that gets assigned to the Docker image. Um, so if the um, GitHub branch is default, I actually um, set the branch uh, tag to main. If it's not default, it becomes a pull number, uh, pull request number. Um, so what this means is, if we, if we were to go into here and we look in our ACR. Um, the ACR repositories uh, demo site. We actually have um, tags for our um, um, image to deploy. So we can actually deploy a um, um, tag 
like pull request number to our um, test instance, or we can deploy main to our production instance. So in this case, where we go to projects and we look at pull request deployment successful. And if we go over to here, test. Three thousand. I'm pretty sure. Yep, there we go. So we have actually two um, container instances running um, with two different um, versions of the container, um, which is great because once you do your pull request, you can actually say um, this is the proof that this um, uh, pull request is working. Um, you can get testers to actually go and have a test at um, this or your pull request reviewers to actually go have a look at the um, end result before they actually approve it and um, push it to the main branch. Uh, let's say if we go to GitHub now again, I should not have to close that. We go to GitHub, um, we go to our pull request. Um, if the approval say, goes and look at this and it looks at it and says, yep, it looks good. Um, the message is up to date, updated. Um, Functionality still works. You can still do this stuff. Um, merge your pull request, confirm merge. Um, has it got merged yet? Yep. Pull request, yep, closed. And Team City will pick up, um, um, pick up the um, commit and we'll start building a container and it will deploy to prod. Um, now this one should run, this one will not because it's a commit to main and not a pull request anymore. So let's just wait any minute now. Is there any questions so far, something or oh, anything that's unclear or confusing? Am I jumping around too much? <laughs> I tend to do that quite a fair bit. Um, let me know if um, that's anything that um, confusing. Jimmy, I wouldn't mind understanding a little bit better. <clears throat> I'm slower than your average person, so bear with me. I wouldn't mind, <laughs> you've got a heading there with Jimmy and you've got like a little icon next to it. And then you've got like, it's broken down into Docker and then Bash and then PowerShell right. on the bottom. Do you want to just explain those groupings? I I, I don't understand them. Maybe I'm, I'm alone though. It's it's a, oh, there is the main branch is now running. Um, it's a, well, Team City is pretty much a hierarchy of projects. Um, so if we were to go to, uh, let's see, let's go back to root. I say project, you get your root project. And under your root project, you get your Jimmy project. And the Jimmy project, you get all your different projects. Um, what this means is things that you define in Jimmy will get um, inherited by all the things that's below Jimmy. Um, let's say if you were to create another project that's not in Jimmy and you define a um, connection in Jimmy, the new project will not inherit all these connections. Um, it's the project level where you actually define your connection to um, the GitHub. Um, GitHub repositories, as well as other connections like um, my Docker registry and stuff like that. Um, it's all project specific. Um, in projects as well, you can define cloud profiles. That's the one where I said you can actually uh, tell it to spin up um, instances based on uh, the agent's need. Uh, but for like EC2, I don't know if a connection here, but I'm pretty sure it will not work here. Um, but yeah, um, does, does that make sense? It's or Yeah, so you, are you calling them projects? Yes, they are called projects. Yeah. Um, and then you get um, build configurations, which are these steps within a project. So Jimmy is a sub-project of root. Um, Docker is a sub-project of Jimmy and Docker build is a configuration in Docker. Um, you can create multiple sub projects underneath this as well, but that's that's different on how you want to um, structure your 
um, build pipeline. Um, Thanks for that. So let's say um, that's oh, actually we missed it. Um, from that one commit, it ultimately picks up that it needs to do a Docker build on the main branch. Um, let's have a look at. Um, no, I didn't know I was still using this. Oh, that's my pretty much my junk email. <laughs> Anything that um, that's unimportant will go there. Um, so that's what it actually does. So it will look at um, the branch, determine the tag, um, build the Docker image, um, and it pushes the um, Docker image to my registry. Um, that one there. And then it will link down to this one here, which then deploys the um, container to production. So this one here will have changed this. So do I have to restart it? So just to, just another question you've got back on the uh, the grouping of those projects. Yep. What would you say? Can you just go back to the screen? And you yep. got like uh, Jimmy, then you got Docker, Bash, and PowerShell. It seems to be like the Docker one would be kind of like the build process, and yes. then you got Bash, that would be like the deployment process. Yep. So if, um, you're right. Um, uh, Team City has uh, classifications on build configurations. You've got your regular build configurations, which is pretty much spits out the um, artifact, and then you got your release um, build configuration, which pretty much deploys that um, artifact to a certain environment, um, which is why you see a run button here and a deploy button here. Uh, hmm. okay. If we go to here like that, build configuration type, regular, and you got your know, build configuration um, deployment here. And you got a composite, which I've never used before. Well, I think it's something new. Um, so yeah, that you got two different build um, types that you could use, um, which is why you see different things like this. <laughs> um, the it, other question I've got is um, at, the, at the top right there, was there like an icon for a new experimental UI? Uh, well? This one, I have never used gonna... this before. <laughs> Let's click and see what happens. Um, I was just curious if you've had a chance to play with that and if you think it looks... Uh, no, I've, I've, I've not actually played with that before. Um, that old UI was the same one I've used like probably Please. seven years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess there's something that's uh, new and fancy. Um, but yeah, it does, it does look good. You get your change log and everything here. Um, hmm. well, it looks, little, looks a little more modern, of course. Obviously, that's probably just, yeah. just styling, I guess. But um, yeah, I just that just caught my eye before. I'm just curious how it looks. <laughs> yeah, um, it really depends on um, if you're more comfortable with this um, sort of UI or the newer one. I'm I'm used to this. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so yeah, that's um, Team City. Let's actually see why this thing has not. I guess I have to restart the. Uh, uh, restart this container because it should be using build five now. Properties, where's the tag? Um, oh yeah, tag main. It should have this as an update in here. Hmm. Have to investigate why. Try control F five just to see if it's. Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure it's built that. Um, let's go have a look at this. What does it think? And it is running. Yep, image main, which is what we want. And it would have built image main, yep. And that would contain changes, yep, from patch two. Yep. So my change is actually in here. So I wonder why this container is not updating itself. <laughs> um, probably have to stop the container or something. Um, 
but yeah, that's, that's the um, summary of it. Um, you do your pull request, um, you get someone to review, you look at the result of your pull request, you get someone um, to approve it, it goes into the main branch, it gets pushed, uh, it gets built, and then it gets deployed to production. Um, um, yeah, you get Um, are there any? Hey Jimmy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I've got a question. So in terms of grouping, right? So uh, the you know you you have Jimmy as your project, right? Yeah. So if I'm trying to replicate this in uh, you know uh, similar to deploying servers and different workloads, so would there be uh, prod um, and and test like you have Jimmy over there, uh, and then would that include uh, all um, other uh, build pipelines and all? Would that would that be a right way to um, look at it in terms of grouping? Well, it really depends, I suppose. Um, if you're deploying a software, um, this is probably the uh, the grouping grouping that you want. So you got your um, software name up here. Um, let's say the software name is Jimmy, and your pipeline will be a Docker build, um, and then your deployment will be probably not called Bash. You probably call this project um, sub project. Um, um, deployment rather than bash like that similar to that um, mm -hmm. and then you go to, so let me go to jimmy back again jimmy that's my sub project uh, deployment docker will probably be named built Let's go back to Jimmy again, and you probably would not have this uh, delete project. Project home. So this will more be more like how the flow goes. So you got your build, and then you got your deployment to both test and then to production. Right, thanks Tim. Thanks for the explanation, Jimmy. Um, I've actually got a quick question. Um, yep. So, with regards to Team City, um, Team City is essentially with its. Um, just trying to understand from a comparison to, you know, for instance, you know, uh, like Azure DevOps um, build pipelines, um, or you know, you got GitHub Actions. So, Team City kind of sits in that 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 kind of space as well. And what I get from that is is that it really was more focused on the docker side of things in terms of being able to deploy um services to a docker image is that pretty much it like was that is that what i um well the, the gist of it um not exactly um well team city can be a lot um, can do a lot of stuff it really depends on the amount of plugins that you install or the amount of customization that you do to it. Um, it it's I would say it's it, it's it's not a re it's it's I mean you can use it for you know I think historically it was more for like builds but there's not really any like limitation on what you could build. It could build anything in it. And yep. I think you can now start to use it for more also for deployments as well. But um, I mean, it's not really any hard and fast um, uh, area where it, it goes. It's, it's kind of pretty a pretty generic tool, and it, it is quite powerful despite the UI looking a little bit dated as well. That, that's, that's that's what I found. Okay, cool. I'm um, so yeah. I was, look at it. I was like, even though it looks a little bit dated, I do. I really don't like writing YAML or JSON. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, if you do not like YAML, you probably not like um, um, Jenkins. Jenkins is pretty much all um, YAML's built pipeline, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> well, it's the same as Chef and Puppet. Like Chef's um, all you know Ruby DSL. Um, you know, so there's a lot of it's essentially there's a lot of DS DSLs, which is you know, um, that's kind of funny though because. Um, 
yeah, I wrote my own, but <laughs> um, and um, I don't like using other people's. <laughs> so, um, okay, yeah, cool. Um, is there any anybody else have any other questions? Oh, there we go. Oh, it, cool. It really took it and um yeah. took a restart of the content to actually um um we get it to get work, the update yeah. through. Well, that's, that's, that's something interesting. I learned something today. <laughs> might have to add that into the pipeline, Jimmy. Yeah, might have to um, blow away the um, container and we add it back in again. But yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> and Jimmy, do you know if it um, uh, Team City supports um, like test integration and things like that? Uh, yes, it test? actually does. Um, I'm going to use a lot of examples from um, my previous workplace. Uh, Works. In my previous workplace, there's this, uh, there's this team where they actually have a fleet of, I think they had like 40 VMs from my memory. Um, and all those 40 VMs, they run thousands and thousands of regression tests um, on every single um, developer build. Um, so Team City was pretty much running all the time um, doing tests. And their test was like very comprehensive. Um, so yeah, if you want it to do test it, um, it definitely could. Uh, this thing, it does everything from builds, tests, and deployments. And um, obviously, uh, asking a silly question, but it obviously can inc include the results of those tests in the, uh, uh, oh no, because the code's actually outside of here. That's where I'm getting confused, yeah. How do you control the release using the tests, because that's obviously, it's obviously separate. Yep, you can actually, uh, it's been a while since I used GitHub, but you can actually post the result of um, of the Team City build back to um, GitHub. Okay. And one of the um, requirement is that the build must succeed before you can actually um, merge the pull request. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a paid, um, Paid service. Yeah, no um, problem. Yeah, just coming from the Azure DevOps world, I just got confused because it's separate. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this is definitely, this definitely can send back the results of your builds. Well, the, uh, yeah, the end result of your build back to whichever repository you got it from. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Um, yeah, I'm um, just quickly responding to um, um, BW's um, question, which was, um, is this being recorded? And yes, it is. Right. Do we have um, any other questions? <laughs> any other questions for this? Uh, um, I think I got one quick last slide left. <laughs> yeah, awesome. um, if there's no other question from Team City or how build pipelines actually work or how this particular pipeline works. I'm happy to answer questions on this pipeline. Um, um, so essentially Team City is monitoring that GitHub repo and then when it detects a, a commit, that's when it will effectively um, do a trigger? Like yes, it'll that's trigger? right. Yep. Okay, yep. Um, so um, let's see, this is pretty much the triggers. So what is looking for, it's just looking for um, um, changes in the default branch. Uh, the default branch is um, main right now, and it's looking for pull request branches. Um, so if as long as a pull request or a um, commit to, uh, to the master branch or main branch, it will trigger this thing to run. And when this build runs, it also will trigger a, oops, it will trigger a um, a pipeline here to run, depending on whether it's a pull request or whether it's a commit to the main branch. Um, so this one here actually has a branch filter. I'm pretty sure. Yep. It does not um, look at default, but it looks at pull. And the deployment one to prod will look at default only. Hmm. 
um, and they both use the same um, um, same deployment template. So the process that actually goes and deploy this container is the same within um, test and prod. Um, so you can actually test the deployment steps in um, test first before actually implementing it in prod. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, is there any other questions that we have for Jimmy? Alrighty then. Okay. Well, um, oh, sorry, Rani, did you want to say something? No, I'm good. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Alrighty. Um, anyway, thank you so much, Jimmy, for presenting. Um, also taking time out of your busy schedule for allowing um, to formulate a, uh, a talk. And um, it's always something that um, it's easier said than done. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you so much for that. That was really, really, really good. Um, so next month, actually, that was one thing we forgot to talk about, which was next month. Um, so Alex will be presenting next month, um, I believe. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what, what, what we're going to have him put down for. Um, was it Docker? He kept changing his mind. I can't remember whether it was Python or Docker. It's one of those two things. Yes, yeah. it's it's Python or it's Docker. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So if you, um, yeah. So that's going to be happening next month, and then the following month, um, I'm still trying to follow up, um, but I might be trying to get a um, a speaker from Chocolatey um, to be able to uh, to give a talk as well. So, um, we will. Yeah. Well, what we'll do is we'll wrap it up. I'm going to stop recording now. So. Um, Anyway, thank you guys for coming, and um, yeah, see you guys next time.